All right. What's up, everyone? We got some uh, a great turnout right off the top. Thank you so much for joining. Hope everybody's doing well. HH, what's up? Happy Friday to everybody. Jay, what's going on? Uh, Craig from Melbourne, good day. My friend Jeff, what's up? Uh, good day to Peter down under. And of course, Rusty, Jersey Red, what's up? How's everybody doing? Danny, what's going on? James Cody, welcome back. We got some people coming off some uh, uh, vacations uh, or whatever. Coming back to attend. I certainly appreciate that. Thanks so much, James, for tuning back in. Elias, happy Friday. Stephen, New Hampshire, what's up? Tien, hello, hello. Ray, what's going on? Same thing, a little vacation. Hope it was great. Uh, welcome back. Red, welcome for the first time. I love the first timers. We'll get into it in a, in a little bit. Uh, Jason, what's up? Larry, what's going on? What's up back at you, brother? I love it. Mickey the dog is here. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Russ, what's going on? Uh, trying to stay dry in Vegas. Gotcha. Uh, Jim Gregory, what's going on? Good to see you. Laura, good to see you as well. For those of you just joining for the first time, uh, this is a Friday night session that we do at the same time on the Guitar Tricks channel uh, each and every Friday, most Fridays, almost all Fridays, uh, the occasional one that I will not do, but uh, most of them. Uh, and uh, we usually have uh, some themes, and we kind of rotate through, right now about four themes, but sometimes we'll veer out, but we usually rotate between the acoustic and the electric, although all of these exercises, uh, for example, for the acoustic can be transferred to the electric, all those skills, and vice versa, okay? There's a lot of it that just transfers, uh, so don't feel bad if you don't have the right instrument for the corresponding week. Okay, just so happens to be a finger picking boot camp volume 10 tonight. Okay, uh, welcome. Well, happy Saturday to Michael in Asia. I love it, Chris. What's going on? And uh, first time to Kathy. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, everybody, for the first time, expand the description below the video. We go through a PDF document of tabs. I've got some musical examples, some exercises that we all run through during the hour. And you can uh, get those up on your computer screen. You can print them out, download them, whatever you need to do in order to follow along. Okay, so uh, expand the description below the video. You'll see some links. There's a link to a PDF. And there's also for those power users who like Guitar Pro, the software, uh, I have that file as well as I make the tabs in Guitar Pro. Okay, what else we got? Steve in Melbourne, good day. Uh, Gerald from Ottawa. Canada representing. Love it. Paul from Australia. Good day again. Steve from Melbourne. Good day. Uh, North Nevada with King 50. I love it. Checking in again. All right. Good to see you, Chris Cook. Looking for a pick, of which we will probably not need tonight. And everybody, I apologize for those of you who uh, are just joining for the first time. I've been battling a little bit of a tickly throat going into some coughing fits. It's still sticking around. It's really annoying, but I uh, may have to mute out uh, parts of the session here as I do go into a coughing fit, trying to make it not happen. So, uh, uh, cause I do a lot of talking, right? So uh, hopefully it won't be too much of an annoyance to you. Chris, what's going on? First time. SoCal. Well, welcome. Welcome. I appreciate that. Steve, what's going on in Alabama? Love to see it. Good to see you. It's for you in Montreal. All right. Love it. Kenneth, good to see you again. All right. We got a lot of the uh, veterans here tuning in each and every week, and I super appreciate that. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a warm-up on uh, a little bit of an adventurous progression. Um, so not exactly starting super easy. Um, uh, we'll get to that in exercise two. Um, but this is a good warm up that just has sort of a musical flavor to it. And the nice part is that it's one single finger picking pattern. Uh, so you can get on one of these chords and practice the finger picking pattern and just stay on the chord to get used to that. OK, that's the first thing. If it's too much to work on the finger picking pattern, then make all the chord changes. You want to sort of uh, bring it down and focus on just a smaller chunk. Right. So uh, for the first thing I might do is take just that first bar. 
I've got a G6 sus4, which sounds a little more complicated than it is. I got the fifth fret of the D string, fifth fret of the G, third fret of the B string, and the open high E string. Okay. Uh, I've also got some suggested fingerings on the staff. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you have a look, I've got T is for thumb. One is for index finger. Uh, two, middle finger. Three, for the ring finger. Okay. Now keep in mind, there's, there's not just one way to skin a cat here. And there are literally lots of different combinations. Okay. Of picking patterns. So this is just a suggested one, but it may not necessarily be the best for you personally. Or what I mean is it may not be the most natural coming to you. So feel free to experiment. I say this on every session. These are meant to be uh, springboards. All these exercises and musical examples are meant for you to experiment. Take the uh, ideas behind, the approaches behind each of these exercises, examples, and experiment with them, okay? That's where you really learn and start to integrate all this stuff, okay? What else have I got? Uh, we've got Chris asking, would it be advisable to go back and start with volume one? Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, I kind of try to keep it in the beginner intermediate realm, okay? Each time we do this, okay, just different variations of sort of the same things, okay? So it's not like we progressed uh, too far on this stuff, just showing different examples at, at the more beginner and intermediate levels, okay? I'm not getting too complicated with any of these sessions, okay? All right, hopefully that helps. Uh, so again, that first chord, and now let's look at the finger picking. You've got thumb on the D string, ind index finger on the G, middle finger on the B, and then the ring finger on the top string. And we're just going to go up and down, right? So it's going to go. Okay. So let's think, Joseph, what's up? Welcome. Uh, so let's think about the rhythm a little bit. If we look at the staff, we've got eighth notes, one and two and three and four. But notice on the fourth beat, that last pluck is a quarter note. So we're going to let that ring out over four and the end of four. So one and two and three and four and. Okay. So if I was going to repeat this. That's our finger picking pattern. Now let's talk a little bit about technique because we do have a lot of first timers joining in and no doubt we've got some beginner uh, level here. So uh, first of all, this is transferable to the electric, but definitely it's a little more suited to the acoustic. Okay, so hopefully y'all have got a, an acoustic out. If not, it's no biggie, but it is a little more suited to the acoustic. Um, you wanna just, biggest thing that you wanna do is relax the finger picking arm right? Anchor it sort of at the top corner of the guitar body. And you want to come in nice and relaxed, sort of in this area. Okay. That's not to say that you couldn't play a little bit over here and a little bit over here. That sort of affects the tone a little bit. And those are musical choices, right? So that might be desirable for some things you want to do. But just as a starting point, somewhere around here, sort of by that the middle part between the saddles and the end of the fretboard. OK, sort of right on the edge of the sound hole or maybe a little bit into the sound hole. So we're coming in a little bit at an angle. We want to try and keep as relaxed as possible. OK, um, if it's more uh, solid for you, if it feels more natural for you to kind of plant the pinky, which a lot of people do, then go ahead and do that. OK, it might uh, sort of lock your arm in place a little bit and make it easier for you. Um, but that's just a personal choice. You also can just kind of float over the strings like I do. I don't tend to do that very much, although I will do it uh, here and there, just depending, right? Depends on what the intent is, what the music is, right? All right, Glenn B, what's up? No problem. Welcome, I'm glad you made it. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a direction for this. Uh, last thing I'll say before we go through the rest of the exercise, 
you want to go slow. If, if it's, if it feels unnatural, if it feels challenging, slow it down. There's no problem going as slow as you need to go to get it under your fingers. Okay. So if I have to play this like that, that's totally fine. If I have to plant the chord and then watch my fingers to help me, that's totally okay. All right. What we got to do is program the muscles, program the fingers to be able to do this stuff correctly. And with all the repetition and practice that we do, it starts to program it so that it becomes a little more second nature. You don't have to necessarily look at the strings any, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, anymore or that kind of thing. Okay. Let's get a grab. Excuse me, guys. Just going to grab a little bit of a lozenge. Getting through these, man. We're getting through it. I'm feeling better. All right. So hopefully there's some tips for you. Okay. Laura, could we also Travis pick this one? Wanted to see how you do that. You could do that. Um, let's see how I would do it. Uh, Donna, what's up? Good to see you. Um, probably do something like that. Okay. A little more advanced than what we're doing. This is meant as a little more of a warm up just to go up and down your fingers. Okay. Uh, Laura, at the end of the session, uh, when we kind of get through everything, I'll, I'll come back up to this and I'll uh, play it slower so that you can kind of get a feel for what my fingers are doing for that. Okay. All right. So let's go through the progression now. So we've got this first one, which is really pretty sound. It sounds kind of floaty. And you know, the technical name for this, we put it uh, above the staff, G6 sus4. So uh, it's basically a G triad right here out of a G bar chord, okay? With an open E string. And also instead of the B note, we've got a C note there. So that makes it a sus4 sound. Really nice, okay? Uh, in the second bar, all we're gonna do is move from the fifth fret of the G down to the fourth fret of the G, and that gives us more of an, just the G triad with the, the higher E note with it, so. So those two bars, right? You wanna just go a little chunk at a time, so maybe just start with the two bars. Okay? Next one is gonna be a B minor triad. Fourth fret of the D, fourth fret of the G, third fret of the B string, open high E string, same picking pattern. Same finger picking pattern. I meant to say. Okay, and then I'm just going to change one note going from the fourth fret of the G to the second fret of the G. So you have to kind of rearrange your fingers a bit. Now that's a D major triad with an added E note. So that's a D add nine. So let's look at those first four bars. Nice stuff. So it's sort of descending a little bit, right? We're coming from the G note and we come down here to the F sharp note. Now let's look in the second uh, line on the PDF. For those of you just joining, expand the description below the video. There's a PDF of the tabs that we're going through in this hour. So uh, hopefully you can click on that and find it. Okay, so bar five, an E chord. I'm just going to grab uh, the D string and the G string on that. Second fret of the D first fret of the G. Tommy, what's up? Appreciate it, man. Okay. Same picking pattern, but now I'm playing the upper part of an open E chord, right? Okay. Just going up and down the strings. So meant to be a little bit of a warm up, but it is a little bit of an adventurous chord progression. All right. Peter, what's up? Tommy, once again, thanks so much for the, for the kind words. I loved all of the Stones tutorials I loved playing, but uh, Dead Flower is, of course, a classic. I'm glad you love it. 
Okay. Now, fourth fret of the D string, second fret of the G string, and still the open top two strings gives us a little more of a complex chord. Chad, you made it. What's up? Welcome, welcome. Uh, like the sound of that chord, F sharp minor seven, add 11. Another floaty, kind of nice, complex, rich sounding chord. So we're just moving notes on the D and G string. Okay, in the third bar of this line, I'm going to move the same shape up two frets. So I've actually got a... Uh, What's up, Rad Flying V? No, no problem at all. Welcome, welcome. Glad you made it. Uh, a double of the B note, but it still goes by pretty quick and sounds nice, right? And then ending off with 7th fret of the D, 6th fret of the G, um, outlining an A chord with a B note added, the open B string. Really pretty sounding A add 9. So I'm going to play through a little bit slowly this whole exercise. Exercise one meant as a warm-up, all right? One and two and three and four and. Progression actually changes keys, uh, starts in the key of G, or even the key of D works, if you want to think of it that way, and then uh, switches to the key of E. So pretty fun, right? All right, Steve, uh, Spooky was great fun. G glad you loved it. It's so funny. I think I mentioned this last year. Uh, the version of Spooky they put up was shot years ago, actually, like maybe five, six, seven years ago. It's crazy. Sort of got lost in the shuffle. Uh, so I look a lot younger <laughs> in that tutorial. But yes, we do have another Atlanta Rhythm Section classic called So Into You, which I shot a couple months ago. It's uh, still in the queue, so it's coming soon, all right? Excellent, excellent. Love it. ARS, some tasty guitar playing in that stuff. That's for sure. All right. Keeping it going. Exercise two. Uh, this sort of harkens back a little bit. It's a little variation of an exercise we did actually in the very first finger picking tutorial. <coughs> Excuse me, the boot, <coughs> boot camp. Uh, so if we grab an open D chord and just do a strum. You think so, Tommy? I don't know. I've been testing negative this whole month, so it's really weird. I don't know what's going on. It certainly seems like it. I mean, I, the symptoms just won't go away. So, All right, that's my strum for exercise 2A. I just want to show that we take a really common strum pattern. Okay? Down, down, up up down this is a very common strum pattern that's used in a lot of songs but what if we took that exact same rhythm which is basically one and two one and two and three and four and down down up up down we take that same rhythm and apply it to an uh, arpeggiation finger picking pattern okay so i've still got my d chord and i'm gonna go Oh yeah, so I've got uh, okay. Works great as a finger picking pattern, right? Speed it up a little bit. You know, works really nice in four four time. Um, works out right over the measure, fills up the whole measure, right? So that's the finger picking pattern for the for the root on the on the D string or the fourth string uh, with the chord on the top four strings. 
But in exercise 2C, I show you how to adapt that to a C chord. And there's a couple ways that you can do it. The first one is to move the thumb down to the third fret of the A string and just get the root, but your first, second, and third fingers are still on the top three strings, okay? Okay, so a little more challenging just because that thumb is a little further away, right? And what you see in exercise 2D is that you've also got the string set, D string, G string, and B string, okay? So. Okay, so now I've just transplanted the original finger picking pattern and moved it down a string set. So I'm on the A string for the root, and then the string is right adjacent to it, D string, G string, B string. So what you realize is that if you have chords that have roots on the fifth string and certainly the low string, you have a choice on adapting a finger picking pattern. You have a choice of what strings to use. So that's a great thing to experiment with when you're working through these examples. If you get to a G chord, for example, right? Uh, what would it be? Right? So I've got the thumb on the low string, but I'm finger picking the D, G, and B. But I can also finger pick the top three strings. Or I could also do the A, D, and G string. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay. Three different musical choices. None of them are preferred. Uh, well, I should say none, none is better than the other. We're just making musical choices. Okay? So think about that. And uh, when you're working on this stuff, you know, try and mess around a little bit. All right, uh, Nikki the Dog's like, Blackfoot's up, but no Highway song yet. No, they haven't released it yet. It might still be in, tra in the transcription department because, as I said before, I know it's edited, um, but it might still be in transcription, so it's not quite ready for prime time. But I think Freight Train is up, isn't it? I think a different uh, Highway, uh, sorry, different Blackfoot song is up there. Uh, David, our other instructor, did that one. So I do think we have some uh, Blackfoot on there. So just be patient a little bit longer for Highway Song. Chad's uh, on the iPad. New Mac Mini on the way before the price increase. Good job, man. It's crazy. I can't believe how expensive Apple stuff is. And I'm kind of locked in the ecosystem, right? I do a lot of music production. And so I love my Mac. But, uh, man, they're expensive. So there you go. Laura's asking, do I know Freight Train? At one time, I did know a version of Freight Train. It is a great one. But I uh, unfortunately have forgotten it. That's a great one. And it's actually pretty challenging. Okay. But I did work it up a long time ago now. 2005-ish. 2006-ish. I could play that. But I did not keep it up, unfortunately. So it is gone, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so there you go. I love Laura. That's still stuck in your fingers because you learned it uh, at a time where uh, everything stays in the vault, which is awesome. All right, Nikki said Nikki the dog. Uh, Blackfoot is the category is empty. So I guess Freight Train's not up. I thought it was up. Not sure what's going on. Um, be patient. Uh, maybe I'll send uh, an inquiry to uh, admin. We'll see what's going on. All right. Laura, it does. It kind of ruins it for all the other patterns. There's a lot of chord melody. See, what happens is when it gets challenging doing uh, that Travis picking stuff, you're adding melodies into the chord shapes, and there's a lot of moving notes while you're doing the finger picking. So it's really quite uh, challenging. So you got to go real slow with that stuff and burn it in. Excellent, excellent. We got some plucked riffs, exercise three. First part of this is sort of that piano-like plucking uh, approach. And 
All right, Donna. Sounds good. Be happy to see you again in the lessons, one-on-one lessons. All right. Um, so we've got a chord progression. C, G, A minor, E minor. That's what we got going on in exercise three. Now, here's the tendency. This is sort of the thing that sometimes happens, <coughs> excuse me, with tab is that uh, if you're plucking the same strings and it's more of an economical pattern, you might not see the full chord tabbed. This is why it's really important to look for the full chord up above the staff, okay? Because if you just sort of fret the notes that are on the tab, and if you make a mistake, you might get the chord sounding a little weird, okay? It's intended that we've got a, C, we're, we're fingering a C chord, we're fingering a full open G chord, we're fingering an open uh, A minor, and then an open E minor. Look at the E minor one. It doesn't look like we're fretting anything. It's because we're not using the A and D string for our pattern. But if I was to make a mistake and kind of hit those strings, then I'm changing the chord, right? So it's always better to practice with the full chord, even if it doesn't show up on the tab. Okay, that's kind of my point with this. So go to the C chord, and what we've got is the plucks on the G and B string, alternating that between the root on the thumb. Sort of a piano vibe, right? Sounds pretty cool. Move to the G chord. I'm moving to the full G chord here. We all do it that way. Okay. So work on that bar. Uh, one more time. Next bar, A minor. I'm going to do the full A minor open chord. Okay. Even though I'm not really plucking the entire all the notes in the chord, just two up top and then the root. E minor. I'm not plucking any of the fretted notes, but if I happen to hit a wrong note, right? Like, right? If I happen to hit the D and G string, it's still going to sound fine. Okay, because I'm playing the right chord. If I didn't do that, hear that? That D note changes the quality of the chord. So putting it all together, it's going to sound like this. Okay. Great exercise for that approach. Okay, a little bit different than just straight uh, single finger plucks. Uh, finger pick picking. You've got a little more of a plucking sound, which is a little more like sort of piano-ish. Everybody with me on that? Okay, so exercise 3B is just changing this a little bit, making it a little more challenging. So now I've got the C chord, and now I'm going to pluck up top, but I'm also going to pluck with my thumb at the same time, three notes at the same time. It sounds a little thicker off the top. All right, so let's just look at the C chord. I'm going thumb and the pluck at the same time. And then my thumb is going to move up a string to the D string second fret. I'm already fretting that because I'm fretting an open C chord, right? Then I'm just going to do a lone pluck on the top two strings of the well, of G and B strings. And then a thumb pluck on the root. So... Now I'm going to apply that same thing to the G chord, okay? Once again, a pluck on the root and the pluck on the G and B string. Then I'm going to grab the next string from the root. So second fret of the A. And back to the root. So putting that bar together. Ah, sorry. One more time so I can get it. A minor next, same thing. Okay. Same finger picking pattern, just a, a few different strings here because we're going to the, 
uh, starting with the, the root on the thumb and then doing that lone pluck with the thumb on the next string of the chord. And then with the uh, E minor chord. Okay, going back down to the low string, still say, staying on the G and B string. See if I can play through the whole thing. Okay. It's a little more of a challenge, but uh, totally worth it. You get your fingers moving in different ways a little bit. It does sound a little bit like uh, the Pachelbel's Canon, right? Yeah, I like it. Uh, we could add a melody on top of that, that, that descending major scale, right? Cool, Russ. I like it. All right, everybody. How are we doing so far? Everybody good? All right. Uh, exercise four. Tommy, appreciate it too. All right. Thanks for dropping in. Um, we did a little House of the Rising Sun last week, but I didn't really do the correct... Uh, chord progression, so I thought I'd throw it in this week with the correct chord progression, but playing it with a, <coughs> excuse me, playing it with a different finger picking pattern in 4-4. Four, four. Remember last week we did it in 12-8. We're going to do it in 4-4 four, four tonight, so it's going to not really sound like the song, but you'll recognize the chord progression from the song. And uh, this one, uh, is a little more sort of real world what you would do with your fingers. So even though I'm covering four strings on the chords uh, for my finger picking pattern, I'm only using three of my fingers. I'm using the thumb and two fingers. And what I'm going to do is move the thumb to cover two of the strings. So if I do A minor, let me slow it down a little bit. Okay, because we're starting off with an eighth note, and then it goes all sixteenths. So one E and a two E and a, okay. One and a two E and a. Yeah, I forgot that I'm going back up. So you see me dropping that thumb down to the D string after I hit the A string. Now that thumb is going to rest on the D string and grab uh, the notes later in the pattern. And I can cover the G and, and B strings with the first and second fingers. Okay. Right. Now in that same bar, I'm going to grab a C chord, but I'm going to pluck the same strings, finger pick the same strings with the same rhythm. So that first bar goes like this. Maybe a little bit slower. Here we go. Okay. Now, from the C chord in the second bar, we're going to go up to D major. So what's cool is that we've got a four string pattern on the A minor. And all we have to do is move up a string set to grab all the notes in the D chord because that those are on four strings as well, just uh, the upper string set, starting from the D string all the way up to the high E, <coughs> right? So we've got okay. So that's a great practice to move from string set to string set. Uh, sorry. Then we're gonna go to the F chord, just doing the top four strings of the F chord: third fret of the D, second fret of the G. Barring down at the first fret of the top two strings. Sorry, play that the right way. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you could use this for Hotel California. Nice one, Joseph. I like that. Right? Yeah, that kind of thing, right? 
All right, so let's play those first two bars. One more time. I think I need to use the correct fingers there. But again, these are just suggested, right? If you feel something that uh, you'd rather do uh, that feels a little more natural, then go for it, right? Okay. Third bar. Back to A minor, but then we're going to go to low E. So that A minor is the same as in the first bar. Then I'm going to fret an open E chord. But now it's going to be a little bit of a jump for my thumb to go from the low string to the D string. Sorry, to the G string. So that's a little challenging, but I thought it sounded the best out of all of your options, right? Because you got some options here. You can go. Keep it low and adjacent. You can move it to the middle strings. Or you can move it to the top three strings. I liked it going. Uh, whoops. Okay. Just a musical choice. And then a thumb graze on the open uh, A minor chord. That's what sort of that up arrow means, sort of a brush stroke. You can use uh, your thumb, it works really well, or kind of spread your fingers out, experiment with that, a little bit of a classical kind of splaying of the fingers, which I'm not so good at, incidentally. All right. So I'm going to play through this nice and slow. So you've got the whole exercise, exercise four, goes like this. good all right exercise five just a sort of a simple little finger picked pattern a little more spread out and then add some strums in and uh combining finger picking and chord sort of strums or grazes it's a great approach coming up with cool uh musical passages stuff like that um so this one we're starting with a, a d sus two so i've got the second fret of the g third fret of the b and uh, once again, I'm moving my thumb, dragging my thumb on the D string up to the G string. Okay? Like that, so. Then I move into an E minor seven shape, second fret of the D string, open G third fret of the B string. Okay? Dragging the thumb again. Sorry. Then going to a B note, I'm still going to hold on to the third fret of the B string because I can see it in the second bar. I'm going to hit that again. Okay, so. Okay. Then you're going to pick it up and grab the thumb on the open G string, open E string, and then the third fret. bit smoother. Now notice, <coughs> excuse me, last finger pick of the first bar of this exercise, exercise five, um, is held over the downbeat of the next bar. So that's why we have that little bit of a pause. We're not finger picking on the first beat of the next bar but coming in on the end of one. That's why we have that little bit of a break there because it's all eighth notes up until there. Okay, and then we pick it up on that open G string, right? Now, what are my strums here? 
Well, I'm starting with an A7 sus4, great chord, floaty kind of chord, right? You got the open A string, second fret of the D, open G string, third fret of the B, open high string. Going to an A7 is just going from the third fret of the B to the second fret. You hear it resolve, right? Okay. All together. Excellent. Scott, what's up? Glad you made it. <laughs> uh, HH has the question. When you have a bracket like that, it means you hold it even if on another bar. Yeah, what it means is that it's carried over. Okay, you're not actually plucking that note. It's carried over into the next bar. Okay? So, uh, and if you look at the staff right above that, you'll see that note is tied. That's what they call a tie. For the rhythm, it means that that is the length of two eighth notes, okay? But I can't really resolve that first bar with, a, you know, a quarter note. You know, two eighth notes and end up as a quarter note, right? But I can't put that last pluck as a quarter note because I'm at the end of four of that bar. So it has to be an eighth note, and then it's held over the first beat, the first eighth note of the next bar, and so you do that by doing a tie to an eighth note over the bar line. And then on the tab, it's in brackets. Okay. Zane, what's going on in Kalamazoo? I love it. Road trip. Excellent. Glad you made it. Cool, cool. All right. Getting through it. How's everybody doing? All right, all right. Okay, uh, exercise six. Uh, usually try to work in some sort of acoustic blues, finger picking blues. Okay. Um, this one's a kind of a cool little fun exercise with a bluesy shuffle. We know it's a shuffle because uh, above the staff where it says six finger pick blues with the text. It gives you the two eighth notes equal the quarter note and the eighth note as a triplet. Okay. That tells you that it's a shuffle instead of one and two and three and four, where everything is metronomic, everything is equally spaced. We're going to put a bounce to it. One and two and three and four. So those ands are pushed a little bit closer to the next uh, beat, the next downstroke. One and two and three and four. Okay. So let's grab an open E chord. Look at that first bar. That's what we're going for. So once again, sort of with the piano pluck idea. And we're alternating the bass. So we've got the root with the thumb. Our plucks are happening on the D and G string, and I'm alternating the thumb between the, a, uh, the E string and the A string. A string, the note on the A string is a B note, happens to be the fifth. So we've got root five bass motion, right? Okay, root five, root five. Second bar, I'm gonna switch it up and just Take a finger off the D string to get the open uh, to get the open D string. Turns it into a dominant seventh chord. So it sounds like we might be moving somewhere. It's a nice chord to set up a chord change. So you put those two bars together. Okay, yeah, a little bit of a Western sound for a blues. That's okay. I like it, Joseph. All right, then we're going to go to the four chord, full A chord. Okay, you can grab it. Uh, we're going to need the second fret of the D, G, and B string. Same picking pattern, finger picking pattern, but from the A string up to the B string. And 
then in the fourth, <coughs> excuse me, the fourth bar, I'm going to open to the open G string. So I'm pulling that finger off the chord. Now I've got the A7. So once again, setting up a move to another chord, right? So from the A to the A7. Okay. Back to the E. Okay. Uh, same thing as the first bar. Now something different. I'm gonna grab the lower part of a B7 chord. <coughs> Excuse me. Second fret of the A, first fret of the D, second fret of the G. And this one's a little tricky because I'm gonna alternate the root five downward. So I'm gonna have to move my middle finger, which is on the root, uh, second fret of B string, down for when I pluck the fifth in this pattern, down to the low string second fret. So it goes like this. Okay, one more time, slow. Oh, sorry. Where are we at so far? Let's start it from the top and we'll get it to the turnaround lick. So it sounds like this. sort of the end of this little progression. We're going to hit thumb the low string and then play this little lick you might, you'll recognize. G string and the high E string together sliding up. So those are triplets. You can see in the rhythms. Those are eighth note triplets. Okay. So we've got a full quarter note. One. Triple and triple. Open E7 chord to end it off. Okay. And that slide is optional. You'll see that little uh, slash going up to the fourth fret of the D of the G string. Just adds a little bit of expressiveness, but you could certainly just start there. Okay. Cool little riff. Let's play through the whole thing. All right. Nice and slow. Fun stuff, I hope. Experiment with it. I mean, that's not a 12-bar blues. That's some sort of cowboy blues that's not 12 bars. So, hey, it's what I came up with, right? Kind of cool. How are we doing? You guys going to love this next one? Um, fun little finger-picking uh, sort of pattern that we've never – I don't think we've ever done anything quite like this. This one's going to be a lot of thumb movement and sort of plucks on the top two strings, okay? Uh, a little bit more of a classical approach, okay? So I'm gonna play the E chord. You can, of course, do the full chord, or if you're confident, just grab from the D string all the way up. First thing is that we are in three, four time. One and two and three. One and two and three and one and two and three and. Okay, so we're using eighth notes and we're in three. Okay, so once they get used to kind of the sound of it. Okay, so using my middle finger to just grab the upper string and we're alternating between that, first the D string, top string with the thumb, G string, top string. 
Okay, G string with the thumb, B string with the thumb. Okay. Got two bars of that, right? But you want to kind of burn it in a little bit. Now we're going to move to an A minor chord. Okay. Move to the G string. And now it's a little bit different. We're going to descend down a melody. So thumb on the G string to plucking the open high E with your middle finger. Now we're sticking on the B string here. First fret with the thumb up to the high string, then go into the open B string, high string. So. Look at the bar after. Now we're going back to the G string. High string. So G string with the thumb, high string with the middle finger. And then I'm going to open up the G string. So descending that melody, right? So, uh, sorry. And then I'm going to grab the third fret of the D string with the high string after. Once again with the thumb. So put those two bars together first. Sounds like this. Okay. So if I put it together, let's see if I can get it flowing, all right? Because this repeats. Ah, I can't do it. Hold on. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow. <laughs> oh man, having trouble. Come on. We can do it together, all right? Quite a challenge. Quite a challenge for me. All right. Got to go slow. If I practice this, I put in a lot of time with this. I know I can speed it up a little bit. Uh, so that's the methodology here. But uh, definitely a different uh, little approach. A little more like uh, classical kind of thing, right? So if you, those of you with your classical acoustic guitar is going to sound good on it. All right. Last Example, as promised, the Travis picking, right? Uh, I'm going to play through a progression here. Uh, and what's fun is that we've got uh, the same finger picking pattern for all these chords. Okay. And it's the Travis sort of picking pattern. I'm going to start on a fifth fret, a uh, root five uh, at the fifth position, D major seven. Okay, so that's the fifth fret of the A, seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, seventh fret of the B string. Okay, so uh, sounds like this. A little slower. One more time. Got to go really slow with this to kind of get it under your fingers. So you notice that we got a quarter note off the top, and then it's eighth notes after that. Except that last little thumb is a quarter note. So you've got. what I came up for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Almost made it. That's what we came up for this one. Um, kind of a cool uh, 
descending pattern, I'm seeing this in the key of A major, right? So actually starting with the four chord, okay? Uh, James, would you briefly describe the essence of Travis picking? Yeah, it's sort of a bouncy kind of... Um, uh, Uh, it, it has a bounce to it. It incorporates, you know, quarter and eighth notes. A lot of times that you've got a lot of uh, thumb movement, like a lot of bass movement. That kind of thing. And a lot of times you've got a lot of uh, uh, sort of shared plucks. Okay. And uh, you, a lot of times you add melodies to it. So if you listen to guys like Chet Atkins, if you listen to guys like Tommy Emmanuel, those are the masters. And they take Travis picking to the high, to the extreme. Okay. But uh, yeah, you can get like, th this is Travis picking at sort of its simplest form, just to sort of get used to the bounce of it, just the feel of it. Um, but you can start adding notes in between and doing all sorts of, you know, kind of adding melodies onto the chords and lots of thumb work to it. Um, we're in the key of A, so I'm starting on the four chord, the D going down to the three, three minor chord, two minor chord, one chord. Back up to the four chord, and then the five chord in a major key is a dominant seventh chord, so I change that to an E7, not an E major seven. Okay. F sharp minor is the sixth chord, relative minor, and then right at the end, I do a little lick, okay, where I'm going to slide up for, uh, 11th fret of the D string and uh, slide up to the 14th fret and grab the 14th fret of the B string. And then pluck the open A, and that sort of resolves to the one chord, right? Back to an A chord. Joseph, yeah, totally does. <laughs> Reminds me of Puff the Mag Magic Dragon, right? Whoops. That's it, little Travis picking extravaganza. Now, as promised, let me just go back and play through that first warm-up progression. Let's see if I can play it with the, that picking pattern, okay? Let's see what it sounds like. Let me go a little bit slower. Sounds cool. Let me try it one more time. There you go. Cool. We good. Hey, listen, thanks everybody for hanging out. I appreciate all the engagement, all the questions. And you guys come in week after week. Um, tons of fun, right? Uh, hopefully it inspires you this week. Have a great weekend. Have a great uh, week into next week. Uh, print out the PDF. Work through some stuff. And all as always, experiment. Okay? Excellent. So we'll, who we got here? King 50. Thank you for the kind words. Steve in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Thank you. King 50. Thank you. Yeah. Doing my best to fight through it. I appreciate the kind words. Laura, thank you so much. Danny, thank you. Marsha, thanks for the kind words. James as well, thank you. MA, thank you as always. Rad Flying V, thank you. Steve, thanks. And a great weekend back at you. Glenn, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Larry, I appreciate the kind words. Red, thank you. Diane, thank you. Kathy. Thanks for the kind words and thanks for stopping by. HH, thanks for the kind words. Love it. Thank you, uh, Jim Gregory. 
as always, thank you so much. Craig B, thank you. Russ, thank you. Mickey the dog, thank you. <laughs> Impatient for the Blackfoot, but it's coming. Yes, Laura. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we're into week three of coughing. Probably even longer, so. Oh, man. But I feel it. it's getting a little bit better, so hopefully we'll be through it for next week, right? Chris, I appreciate it. Thank you. Joseph, thank you. Uh, Tejas, thank you. <coughs> Scott, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Gerald, thank you. Uh, ah, about done. <laughs> That's an hour. Peter, thank you. Gerald, thanks so much. <laughs> All right, Nikki, do it. Nikki the dog. All right, everybody, listen. Have a great weekend. Have a great next week. We'll be back on the electric next week, same time. We'll see you then. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. Cheers. See ya. See ya. See ya.